Hey guys, Duncan Meter. Welcome back to the channel. Look what we've got here, the famous AR-15. Uh, if you can do me a little favor, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you can like and subscribe. It really does help me to promote the channel uh, and it helps me to continue to produce content for you guys. All right, I wanna talk about the AR-15. I got a lot of questions that say, what do you recommend for home defense? Do you like the AR-15 for home defense? Uh, I'm going to give you my short answer, which is no, I don't like this for home defense. Um, obviously, I like the firearm. I own the firearm. We wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't like it or own it. Uh, but I don't think it's the best item for home defense. You need to look at it uh, from the perspective of you're in your home. Somebody, if you, if you need to defend yourself in your home, somebody has broken into your home, there's a home invasion, you're asleep, maybe you're on the couch, it doesn't really make a difference. This is very unwieldy. This is almost three feet long. You know, yes, in my state you cannot collapse the, the um, buttstock here, but you can in some other states, but even if you were to collapse this, you're only gaining like three inches. This is a very unwieldy firearm. This is excellent if you're on the battlefield. Uh, this is great if you're at the range. Uh, this is great for lots of different reasons. Uh, I know some people hunt with the AR-15. Again, not my firearm for hunting, but you know, to each his own. The problem with this for home defense is kind of uh, twofold. A, it's unwieldy. So let's just say you're in bed in the middle of the night, you hear a glass break, somebody breaks into your apartment, your home, your trailer, wherever you live, it makes no difference. Um, your chances are you're not sleeping with this. This is not under the pillow. This is not on top of your nightstand. This is not in the dresser drawer right, or the nightstand drawer right next to you. You're gonna have to get up and get this. Maybe you have it leaning against the bed. Maybe you have it in a closet, uh, unknown. But a handgun, you can have under your pillow if you chose to. You could have it on your nightstand. Could you put this on the nightstand? Yes, but it's a little overkill, I think. Uh, but the other main problem is overpenetration. The 223 round is a very powerful round. Uh, if you look at this round compared to what was used in World War II, however, which was the 3006 for the M1 Garand, you will notice that the 223 or 556, whatever you'd like to refer to it as, is significantly smaller. This weapon, yes, it was designed to kill. Any gun is designed to kill. I don't disagree with that. But this is not nearly as powerful and this is not nearly as deadly in my opinion as the M1 Garand. I, I have M1 Garand uh, ammo. I actually have an M1 Garand. Uh, I just don't have any near me here for the video. But the M1 Garand round is significantly larger. If you get hit with an M1 Garand, you're going down and you're not getting back up. See, even the bullet fell down. If you get hit with a 223, you may get back up. You may be injured on the battlefield, which will cause more soldiers to come to your aid which will then cause them to become injured or killed as well if they're being taken out by 223-556 rounds as opposed to the M1 Grand, one hit, you're usually uh, one and done. So again, this is a battlefield rifle. I am not knocking it. I actually really like it. I love shooting it at the range. I wouldn't want to give this up for anything, uh, but it is not my number one item for home defense. Uh, I will talk about that in other videos, but in my opinion, I would go with a shorter shotgun, you know, one of these smaller tactical shotguns. Uh, Mossberg makes one, I think Remington might even make one. Uh, I have one, I'll, I'll do a review on it. Uh, and it's maybe this long. So you're, you're losing almost a foot, you know, or, ha or at least half a foot of length, um, or a handgun. Uh, you know, you don't wanna over penetrate. If you're in an apartment, God forbid, and you have to use this firearm uh, and you shoot it at somebody, you're gonna go through that person and then the wall and then maybe into your neighbor's apartment and God forbid uh, injure or kill them. Uh, you always have to be very mindful of what is beyond your target. If you have a handgun with hollow point ammo, chances are you're gonna hit your target and it's gonna stop. You're not gonna go through the target, through the wall, into your neighbor's apartment. Uh, even if you're in a house, maybe you're in a populated uh, you know, residential suburban area. If you use this in a house for a home invasion, you're gonna go through the bad guy, through the wall, maybe across the yard into your neighbor's house. Um, so again, there's a lot of opinions out there and I am not knocking folks that choose to use this. If this is the only firearm you have and somebody just broke into your house and there's a home invasion and they're gonna kill you, well, you need to use whatever it is that you have to save your life and your family's life and defend yourself. I will never tell you no, lay down and get killed because you don't wanna use the AR-15. No, use what you have. But if you have a choice, 
I would certainly recommend getting the AR-15. I really like it. Um, but I would get something else for home defense. A shotgun. You know, yes, you, you don't have to aim a shotgun per se. You obviously have to aim it in the general direction. Uh, the shot, by the nature of it, is going to spray. Uh, but in, in close quarters combat in your house, you're defending yourself. You know, the person that's trying to kill you may only be seven feet away. So it's not going to spray that much. You still have to kind of aim, but this, you have to aim more. To worry about overpenetration, the shotgun, in my opinion, unless you're using a slug and you're in an apartment, the person's right next to an adjoining wall, I think you'll be fine. Uh, or a handgun, I think you'll be uh, fine as well. Uh, another question I get about this firearm particularly, and some of you on, on the video might be wondering, what is this orange thing here? This is actually made by Gun Vault, and it's a lock for uh, the firearm, basically. I don't really like this. I, I actually do not recommend this. Uh, I thought I liked it when I bought it. Basically it goes in and it takes the place of the magazine and you lock this in there and then essentially it renders the firearm uh, safe or useless because you can't put a magazine in there. Through the years I've been using this it, it kind of gets stuck. It's hard to get out. Uh, I'm just not a big fan but it is what I have for this firearm. I also keep this in a safe, so I don't always use this. Um, but again, just my opinion. Uh, this AR-15 uh, is made by Bushmaster. Uh, I do not have sights on it. Uh, this is actually optics ready. You can put uh, optics on here. You can take this off. You can put iron sights. Uh, you can do whatever you'd like. Um, I'm still kind of trying to determine what I want to put on here. I might put a Trigicon scope. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, again, where I live right now, all the ranges are closed. Uh, I can't really go shooting at the moment due to uh, everything that's going on with this pandemic, this disease, uh, you know, and plus ammo is incredibly hard to get right now, so I don't really want to burn any uh, at the range. I want to conserve what I have until, God forbid, uh, I need it or everything goes away and I can go back to the range. Uh, also here on the table, I've got some magazines. Again, I live in an unfriendly state, uh, so we're limited to 10 round magazines with seven rounds in the magazine, so you can only imagine how awful that is. Uh, but they also make for this firearm, they make 15 round magazines, 20 round, 30 round, they make drums, they make, you name it, uh, you can get it. Uh, all, di all different types of uh, magazines. I think they even make five rounds uh, for hunting. Uh, I previously had the 30 rounds when they were legal in this state. Uh, unfortunately, they no longer are. So I hope this kind of helps you guys if, you, if you're wondering, should I get the AR-15 for home defense? Look, like I said before, if it's the only firearm you own, the only one you have, and someone breaks in your house and you need to defend your life, well, you need to do what you need to do. Uh, that decision is not up to me to make. That is up to you. Uh, and I would recommend that you do what you need to do to save your life. Um, but if you have an option to say, use the AR-15, use a handgun, use a shotgun, my first choice would probably be the handgun or the shotgun. I kind of am 50-50 on both. I like the handgun because it's much smaller, uh, it doesn't stick out. If I'm coming around a corner, I'm not worried about somebody grabbing the barrel and wrestling the firearm away from me. Uh, the other problem with the handgun though is you kind of have to be a little accurate. The shotgun, you have to be less accurate uh, just by the nature of, of a shot. Uh, so again, one and the same, it's, it's your choice, but I would recommend that you own one of these. I would not recommend that you use it for home defense. Now, maybe there's a mob coming down the street I don't know why, I'm not even going to speculate, but there is a raging mob coming down the street towards your house. Yes, at that point I would want to use the AR-15. This is very effective against a mob that is trying to invade your home. Hopefully that never happens to any of you, but should it, this would be a very effective weapon. Uh, this was what was used during the LA riots for storekeepers to protect their shops. Uh, they had these, they had uh, AK-47s, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, so again, your choice, but this is the review of the AR-15. Uh, and for those that are wondering, AR does not stand for assault rifle. It stands for Armalite rifle, which was the original uh, manufacturer or designer, uh, and it was model 15. This is made by Bushmaster. Uh, Smith & Wesson makes these, Colt makes these, Stag Arms makes these, uh, you name it, you can get it. Um, I've had this for a long time. Uh, I like this. Uh, again, it's not my go-to weapon. Uh, this is kind of just something I keep in the safe. I take it to the range. Uh, I enjoy it for what it is. I like target shooting with it. Very low recoil. Uh, great firearm. Uh, fun to shoot. Uh, everybody always enjoys trying it out at the range. Uh, ammo is 
relatively available. Uh, right now it is not. Magazines are relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can get a magazine like this for about $13. You can get a 30 round magazine for about $13. You can get used GI magazines. Uh, it's very um, adaptable. So I hope this has kind of helped you. Leave a comment. Let me know what do you use for home defense uh, and what do you think about the AR? You know my opinion. I love the AR, not for home defense. Um, but again, if it was the only thing I had, I would use it. If a mob was coming, I would use it. Uh, and I will do some reviews on what I do think uh, is appropriate for home defense and why and what type of uh, shot do I use in the shotgun, what type of rounds do I use in my handgun. I'll talk about that in later videos. So I hope you enjoy this and like and subscribe. Thank you.